okay so uh, i have given you some uh, video lectures okay just to go through the initial part the introductory part of this particular section so i believe you have gone through it So I hope yes. So there you have gone through like the, the first video. Hmm? The last class I have given you two links, no? Yes, the YouTube video. Yeah. So it's yes, YouTube video. Yeah, those gear nomenclature as well as uh, just, uh, classification as well as the nomenclature. So there I hope you have gone through the different gear nomenclatures where we have utilized the spark gear as the reference gear so as to show the different terminologies which are associated with here okay so how many of you have gone through it yes or no the first video Okay, the nomenclature you have not gone through. Others, what about others? So, like the basic one, square gear, the rack and pinion. Yeah, those things already discussed, no? Okay, so what about others? If no, then I have to discuss. Let me know. Sir, not seen, sir. No, okay, so for, I think the screen is, uh, slides are visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, this thing, rack and pinion, already we have uh, discussed, like uh, it's a special case of spark gear, and uh, for converting rotary motion into translation motion, we use this rack and pinion. Then we have discussed also about helical gears and the uh, herringbone gears, okay? And I told you to just find out about the difference between double helical and herringbone gears, okay? I hope you have understood and you have gone through it. And, uh, Okay, so uh, then we have discussed about this bevel gear where we have seen that basically it's uh, used to transmit to transmission between two intersecting shafts. That is the important thing. Okay, so this is for intersecting shaft. So now here, if you see in this particular figure, so this is one shaft direction, this is another shaft direction. So they are intersecting here, right? Okay, so they are the intersecting shafts, and for in this particular cases, we use this kind of your will gears here okay so now uh, this angle of inclination may be a, any thing between like trends between 0 to 180 but uh, these two extreme cases are generally not there but theoretically it's also possible so in those cases we can use this okay and uh, whenever there are like uh, gears of same size and which are connecting to soft at uh, right angles to each other there is a special name for this particular bevel gear as we have previously you might have gone through it okay so we call this as meter gear and uh, if you look at the uh, different automobiles like the uh, different etc trucks etc etc et et first uh, from the and right now i am drawing the rear side let's consider first from the back we are viewing it okay so these two are the wheels okay from the back then you might have seen in that particular rear excel Okay, in between here, something like this, some this kind of housing you might have seen. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so generally this particular portion, okay, it houses the differential part of the automobile. So from your professional, you already know, that means this differential, okay, one thing is like, from this side the in this is the engine side okay engine side and from this we have got the propeller shaft here which is rotating in this particular direction so now from here we need to rotate this axles okay for rotating for giving motion to the rear wheel now this direction motion now if you look at so if this is the axis you consider okay and uh, this is the output case we need to output here so now they are intersecting in nature. So in those cases, once again, we can make use of this particular. 
and the special arrangements which is generally there in the bottom will show the difference here okay one thing you can like uh, in the 90 degree to your uh, proper sub direction that is towards the rear axle it can convert uh, give the motion apart from that whenever basically turn like your it you already from your steering gear mechanism you already know so uh, whenever a car is taking or any vehicle is taking turn so now this angle turned by inner wheel as well as outer wheel is different or an, another sense you can say if this is the center of curvature for this curve part so this one this, this distance up to this particular wheel and the distance up to this particular wheel is different that means to take this particular turning so this angle this wheel has to move a greater distance okay compared to this so this kind of differentiated movement also is basically given by the differential that is there in the dongle those who have gone through the video it should be clear to them okay so next uh, here you can see in this particular figure it may be straight kind of bevel gear or spiral or helical bevel gear depending on what is how the tooth are being cut okay so here this is uh, the, the case of like the case of spare uh, uh, here the teeth you can see these are kind of straight here okay and uh, here these are curved right having a particular helix angle so and uh, this is the soft axis and uh, this is the soft axis for this particular gear they are intersecting similar is the case here this is the axis of the soft okay and uh, this is the axis of that particular soft okay so they are intersecting in this okay and uh, basically what happens this wheels okay this people here are actually like a I can consider sometimes it is being asked there as if you can if you look at properly so you can see this influence here okay so generally the teeth of the reveal girl they are cut on the on the surface of a cone sometimes this question is being asked so if this is the code here okay if you look at this particular person one we will get if you consider then we can consider as is the teeth are being cut here okay as if this is the person of this particular bevel gear this is not like straight okay so this person the teeth of the bevel gear okay they are cut on the surface of a cone next like a uh, warm and normal if you have those who have gone through the video it should be clear to them so then anyway, this is the see, warm is, there are two elements okay warm and normal warm is a cylindrical body and uh, where we have multiple one or multiple threads cut on the form of a particular helix okay sometimes like it may be conical in shape also okay like uh, this kind of shape having the thread here okay and uh, what happens here as you can see this is one axis and uh, for this particular wheel okay into that uh, or out of the particular plane the axis is there so they are neither intersecting nor parallel okay so basically the non-parallel non-intersecting kind of skews are for skews of we are using it. okay so here uh, depending on how many number of teeth are engaged it may be called a single or double rotate form and form wheel now here you can see in this particular figure it is more evident here okay so now uh, in general what happens so for getting uh, in the case of highest uh, speed ratio cases okay so we go for we use this like a uh, Warm and normal, like speed ratio as high as 1 is to 500, that is also can be achieved by using uh, your warm and warm gears. Okay, so now here one intersecting property that is there, and I hope all of you have also gone to the video. So, here for happens the warm it can easily turn the gear. That means if you give rotation to this particular form, this the thread like portion, okay, so the cylindrical body, so it can very easily turn the wheel or the gear but uh, if you try to rotate the gear and you're expecting some motion in this particular one then that is not easy okay but uh, that cannot be done that means this gear by rotating this gear we cannot turn the arm that's why this self-locking kind of capability also is sometimes used for self -using. that means in only one direction movement whenever you require there also you can do this as they use this warm and warm drive. okay and here it is a uh, contrast to the other type of gears so 
there is surface contact between the overarm and the overarm wheel and that makes it higher pair or lower pair higher pair or lower pair lower pair sir correct so it makes it this particular gear type okay lower pair but in general whenever people ask you about gear and gear type then now you have to consider like higher pair okay so now whenever we are talking about getting maximum efficiency then i need a spiral angle that is there on the room thread okay so it has to be slightly more than 45 degree okay and uh, now uh, I have actually given you the video regarding where I have explained the ornament laser and all gear ornament laser, but uh, as people have not gone through properly, once again we need to discuss here. So now what happens? Uh, as I have previously also discussed, when two gears are in uh, when two in mass, that is two mating gears, and really the smaller we call as the pinion, and that generally is the driver if nothing is being said. And the bigger gear, we can really consider as the gear, or which is the driven case. Okay, now uh, that is the uh, most of the time that is happening pinion is driver, and the gear is the driven member. Okay, so now if you look at this particular two figures, figure A and figure B, then the, as we have also previously discussed, then the, each and every time if you need to draw figure b this diagram okay it will be very tiresome for you people that's why uh to uh, distinguish or to designate the gears which are in mass okay we uh draw it just by sway to circles okay like it looks like a circle and we just eliminate that particular thick person okay now here what do what is the assumption that we make okay we just approximate it with certain circle okay so now if you look at in this particular figure okay and in this particular person if you look at then the contact between the this tooth from the gear a and the tooth from the gear b it is there somewhere here okay similar is the case whenever this gear is rotating and this gear is rotating both are rotating then the then the next pair of the teeth will come into contact once again in this particular position only Okay, similarly after that this person will come into contact, then they say like that, so thing will carry on. And this particular uh, point, okay, actually there is a point, we call it this point that is designated by P, that is nothing but the pitch point. And the circle that we can draw, with this particular circle, this dotted one, okay, so in this gear as well as in the other meeting gear, okay where the contact is there so this circle is actually is the we call as the pitch circle and this pitch circle where actually the pitch point is also there and the contact between the teeth of the two meeting gear is there that we actually represent here in this particular diagram okay so this diagram is approximated with this if you look properly then here you will see it is written this uh, radius of this particular gear is r1 and for this case up to this not up to the this portion of the teeth, okay, or neither to the base portion of the teeth, not the highest portion of the teeth, but up to the circle portion, this is R1. Similar is the case, this is R2, okay, so here up to the pitch circle, this is R2. So we approximate like this, understood? Yes? I have that say yes. So now uh, we'll discuss about the different gear terminologies, different words, the terms that is involved with the gears. And for showing all the terminologies, we are actually considering spark gear as the reference. So in this particular case, we are not drawing the like the whole spark gear by showing all the teeth or like that. Depending on what is the number of teeth, we are not just showing that. But uh, if you properly so to the same teeth okay if you take that then uh, by considering two teeth okay so we'll be able to show all the related terminologies which are associated with that okay that's why whenever uh, in the question and you know, if someone asks you to show the different gear terminologies you need not have to draw some diagram like this we're by showing all the teeth channel you know, but you just draw uh, two adjacent teeth okay not this and this or other like that okay but any two adjacent okay so two consecutive teeth you have to consider so uh, that must you will be considering and uh, like in a kind of profile you'll be trying to draw and with respect to that we will show the 
different terminologies involved. Okay, so now we'll see what are the different words, the terminologies that is there. So now, uh, <coughs> one figure is this, another figure just to show the other views. We are drawing this. Okay, so you can see one of the view here, another view here. Okay, so if you just project. This is with respect to this. So this pitch line, we have, we have got the contact here. Okay, and uh, this is another one. Okay, so these are the pitch circle for two meeting gears we are showing. Okay, this is one view. This is another view. Okay, here this is the sub for one gear, and this is the sub for another gear. Okay, and uh, in this particular view. the pitch line the point at which the contact between the uh, two gears okay to from the two meeting gears there that point is pitch point in this view that pitch point will extend up to a line okay different pitch point throughout the thickness if you consider throughout the width of the teeth if you consider then it will extend up to a line so that line is pitch line okay now here it is like this okay and depending on uh, whether it's a spar gear or helical or like that then you will have the teeth cut here if i draw like this this indicates spar gear or helical gear if i show the teeth like this what does it indicate by looking at this figure will you be able to tell whether it's a spar gear that i am drawing or helical gear that i am drawing Okay. Yes, yes, because these are straight state profile, okay. And access to Excel with this particular access of the sub. Okay. Next uh, if I just draw like this for this trace it is like this, okay. For this this is like this. Then it understand that what? Do you understand this to be what? Helical, correct. Okay, so now uh, different nomenclature that is the pitch surface. Okay, so now uh, this every time we have been discussing the word pitch. Okay, pitch uh, circle, pitch point, pitch line, etc. Similarly, pitch surface also is there. So this is a uh, uh, surface that is imaginary one only. The surface of the imaginary rolling cylinder that is that the uh, two head gear may be considered to replace. That is nothing but. That particular surface is known as the pitch surface. These are all imaginary things, okay? In practice, you will not see there. And uh, what you can like have this pitch circle, okay? So now, uh, pitch circle is the imaginary circle, which by its pure rolling action, it is going to produce a similar effect or same effect as that of the actual gear, which is under reference. As you can see here, okay? So as uh, previously also I have discussed in the previous discussion. If you look here, so here this is the I can consider like this is the actual gear profile, okay, having all those teeth and all. And uh, oh, this is the pitch point, and this circle is the basically is the we have to uh, talk about the pitch circle. So basically, this uh, uh, circle, okay, by which we are representing by this set, we are representing this situation only, and it will be having the same effects, okay, as that of this situation. Okay, so now that circle is nothing but this imaginary circle which by its pure ruling action is going to produce the same effect as that of the actual gear under reference that is pitch circle. Okay, and uh, there is one point known as the pitch point. So that is nothing but the point of contact of the two pitch circles of the meeting gears, and ultimately, there only the tooth profile from both the gears they meet. Okay, next uh, now here. If you look at this particular figure, so we are drawing like this. Okay, we are showing one, two, showing this person. Okay, one, two, space over, then we are showing the at the center. Okay, and uh, we are also showing it's thickness okay the width of it so this way we are drawing two 
adjacent to for a spark here okay this is what we have drawn basically and uh, here if you consider the upper portion of this stitch from here and like this and corresponding teeth and if you go like this okay you'll be able to draw one circle that circle we are drawing then uh, from this portion at the mid from the pitch point portion this pitch circle we are trying to draw okay similarly here at the portion we are going on to circle so like that okay and uh, with respect to this we are going to show the different terminologies now first of all addendum or ultimately the addendum circle so now this addendum this addendum addendum this word should be important so addendum circle is the circle which is bounding the ends of the teeth okay in a right section of this particular curve. so now basically uh, this upper for one this one this circle which bounds the this portion okay the upper portion of the teeth okay and it encompasses a this particular circle this is known as the addendum circle this is the addendum circle the root circle or the addendum circle now here through the addendum portion whatever circle we can draw from the root portion it is known as the root circle or the addendum circle now what is this addendum and addendum you must know then if you know about these two then uh, or through addendum whatever circle goes that is the addendum circle through the addendum portion the circle that is going okay passing through that is the addendum circle now what is this addendum and addendum now if you go through then uh, you might recall that this particular person actually where the contact if you suppose this is one gear right okay now this only one gear will not work right so Actual practice okay the other gear that is suppose this gear suppose we are drawing okay now in actual practice there will be another gear like this okay and this is so it from this gear and that is from this gear okay they come in contact okay they are missing so in excel case what will happen if i consider suppose another gear that is there so this as if don't mind my drawing this the tooth from this okay will be something like this yes or no are you following me suppose gear a yes sir suppose gear a so there will be some gear yes. b okay gear b will look something like this okay in this particular portion the open space basically that is from the other gear will be there okay now actually here we have got the contact between them that is the piece. and the uh, food is actually whatever circle draw that is the speech circle okay so now if you look at this particular uh, the gray colored one okay so now this addendum is nothing but okay addendum is nothing but this particular radial distance this is not the linear distance like this okay but see if we suppose suppose somewhere here the center will be there no? okay so from the center these are the radial distances right so along the radius that means okay so so this way the radial distance between this particular pitch circle and the upper addendum circle this much distance is known as the addendum this portion the upper portion understood the radial distance between the pitch circle and the addendum circle that much distance is addendum similarly what is the addendum it is the radial distance between the pitch circle and the root circle so if you look at this particular figure so this one second is the pitch circle and the, after the in the root portion we have got the root circle so this radial distance is the addendum mind it just this is the radial distance that we are talking about okay so this is addendum that is the addendum here it's now this is nothing but the difference between the addendum of one gear and the addendum of the mating gear okay so generally it is given by clearances there will be later on we will dis we'll discuss about one another word that is the module okay so it is one zero point one five seven times module this is this directly we can utilize something uh, this particular level whenever we'll be solving some problems 
ओके सो डिफरेंस बिटवीन एन रैंडम ऑफ वन के एंड द रैंडम ऑफ वन के एंड द रैंडम ऑफ द मीटिंग ओके सो ओके देन इट्स द योर क्लियरेंस बिकॉज़ ड्यूरिंग इट्स द कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन the meeting here will not come and come in exactly i mean contact throughout to to the whole depth of it okay but there will be certain difference that difference is clear really face of the so this is the portion of that particular tooth surface which is lying outside the piece surface so if you look at this particular figure so now whenever you're thinking of the 3d portion okay so if you now consider this portion this face okay so now uh, outside this this portion what is outside of this particular portion is known as generally the face portion this one the hatch one that i have drawn okay so part of the tooth surface which is lying outside the tooth surface similarly there is another word flank okay that is the similar portion but it is the inside portion this portion this portion is the known as the the inside portion is known as the flank portion the upper portion or outer portion is face lower portion is the flank portion understood yes okay Yes, I have understood. Thank you, I have understood. So now there is another word known as the circular thickness or the tooth thickness. We call it. Okay. So now this particular tooth thickness will be measured on the along the pitch circle. That means it is not the radial and all. Okay, but along this pitch circle will be measuring the distance. Okay. So now what is that? We'll let's see. So the thickness of the tooth measured on the pitch circle is nothing but called as the circular thickness or the tooth thickness okay so now how many tooth we have shown here we have drawn two teeth okay so now in this portion pitch circle portion the pitch circle portion along the pitch circle okay this portion this thickness is known as the tooth thickness and this is not a linear one okay we are not drawing like linearly but this is the arc distance along what along this pitch circle okay so that is known as the tooth circle not tooth thickness sorry not tooth circle or circular thickness now there is another word known as the tooth space okay now this is nothing but the distance between the adjacent teeth once again measured on the pitch circle now this portion there are two tooth okay oh, this is one this is another now you can see there is certain gap in between here right so now this distance or this gap between two adjacent teeth which is once again measured along the pitch circle is known as width of space or tooth width okay width of space or tooth space sorry this tooth okay next uh, prior to going to back class we will discuss about this circular pitch okay so now what is this circular pitch circular pitch is nothing but the distance of the point on the tooth the corresponding point on the adjacent teeth once again along the pitch circle only so this is generally given by p is equal to pi d by t once again d by t later on you will see this is going to give you the module okay so now this is how we can get the pitch circle the circular pitch value and uh, there is nothing but it's so now once again along the pitch circle pitch circle is very important as you can see okay pitch point pitch circle those are important so now if i consider this point from this teeth and the corresponding point we have to consider on the adjacent teeth okay so if i consider this then this is with the corresponding point so this distance along the circle along this particular arc is nothing but the circular pitch also i can consider this point 
from this state then correspondingly i have to consider this point from the disk okay then this distance the arc distance only okay not the straight distance not the linear distance but the arc distance that is going to be my circular pitch okay understood any confusion after this much let me know hello no doctor sir Okay. 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 So now there is another word. This is known as a diameter piece PD. So this is nothing but the number of teeth per unit length of pitch circle diameter, but this is in inches. Generally in our country we generally don't follow the inch system. So in terms of diameter pitch, we'll be following the basically the module condition. So but generally this is PD means D by D. That gives you the diameter pitch. Sometimes in terms of diameter pitch, some value might be given. But in general, we don't follow it. So P D is diameter pitch. T is the number of teeth here, and D is the pitch diameter. Okay. So generally here, whenever we'll be talking about diameter or size of the gear, generally we mean up to the pitch circle diameter only. Okay. So that you must automatically understand. Then the very important word module given by small m. So nothing but it is the ratio of the pitch diameter in millimeter. That is important to the number of teeth. So m equal to d by t. This will be very much used, and this is the in the it is used in SI edit system. In case of this diameter pitch, we are not going to use this. Mostly we will be using the module word. Okay. So similarly, we have got gear ratio given by capital Z. It is nothing but the ratio of the number of gears on the gear to that of the pinion. So this bigger gear will have certain teeth, okay, and the smaller gear, missing gear, will also have certain number of teeth. So that it, in terms of teeth number, this T by small t, okay, number of teeth on the gear to that of the pinion is given. That gives you the gear ratio, okay. Then uh, we have got like velocity ratio for the full gear drive, just like any drive. Here also we'll be having the velocity ratio. So this is nothing but here we'll be talking about circular velocity only. That omega is really the no. okay in terms of omega we call it okay the angular velocity. Okay, so here here that is the velocity ratio is defined generally as the ratio of the angular velocity of the driven. Or the follower to that of the angular velocity of the driving gear. So you must remember what by what the angular velocity of follower by the driving. Okay. So once again, like uh, if we just consider, so we know small d diameter of the wheel, or ultimately that is nothing but the pitch circle diameter. If we tell and the speed of the wheel, okay, omega is the angular velocity, t is the number of t. Then uh, velocity ratio we can write like omega two by omega one, which in terms we can write like uh, n two by n one. Okay. And uh, in terms of as you can previously also we have discussed during while we have discussed about the friction drive of wheels and all. Okay, so it is inversely proportional to the size, so it becomes t1 by d2, or in terms of the number of teeth, t1 by t2. Okay, so that is inversely proportional. So for here the subscript one is for the driver, two is for the driven or the follower. Okay, so this thing regarding the structure you can. Remember, and uh, already we have by this previous knowledge, prior knowledge already we have solved one one problem. If you recall, so next very important thing that we have like this is backless. So what is this? So backless. This will be the term that will be often encountering whenever you are talking about different gears which are in mesh or sometimes with respect to even a uh, screw system also. So now what is this backless? So it is nothing but the difference between the thickness of a tooth. And the width of tooth space of the mating gear along pitch circle. That means, if you look at the previous figure, so now this is the tooth thickness which we consider along the pitch circle. Similarly, this gap portion is nothing but tooth width or width of space, tooth space or width of space. Okay. So now in this gap portion of this tooth uh, gear. Comes the tooth portion, okay, from the 
find the thickness of the tooth thickness of the tooth excel and width of the tooth space of the mating gear at the pitch circle is perfect okay. so now if if the situation is something like this then this particular distance which is the gap along the circle is nothing but backless now because of backless what may happen so because of backless some of the motion is nearly lost that means when this is uh, one gear is rotated it is expected that through the action gear action the other gear should get the motion transfer transfer motion. but what will happen if there is excessive backless now during this course okay to maintain to uh, close this particular gap and come in contact with the other gear then it has to traverse this particular distance right and during that time the motion is there on this particular field but as there is no contact between the tooth from this and uh, this so the motion transfer will not take place so this is one of the problem with that understood so in this thing with a very uh, good way with in, in the uh, in your previous video also i have very in a better way i have already demonstrated if you look at then uh, you'll see so now the difference between the thickness of the tooth uh, is in effect like this nothing but the so let me quick draw it okay let's see Let's consider this is one gear, okay? And another meeting gear we have to consider. Right? So, this is one tip from this, another tip from here, this meeting gear. We are considering another tip. So, in this to tweet only. This gear is coming down. This to the other meeting gear will come. Okay, so this way there will be multiple teeth. All of you can see, na? No? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now here you can look at properly. Now here in this portion, you can see some gap. So, gradual engagement should be there, that is expected from gear A and gear B, that is gradual engagement. Okay, so in that particular case, so it from gear A and gear B, okay, so they have to be properly messed. So, it requirement is proper messing between the teeth of gear A and gear B. So, gear A, that is the upper one is the driver, the lower one, that is gear B, is driven. So motion transfer is supposed to happen from A to B whenever there is some motion in the A. That is, that is what is expected. Now I am just making it bigger, okay? So as to understand, suppose what is the gap that is there, exaggerating the view. So, it from the other meeting gear, this is this one. Okay. Just integrating the view. In that particular case, what basically is happening? So, somehow, whenever it is moving like this, actually, okay, so this point, somewhere it will come in contact here. So, it should come in contact here, yeah? It is moving like this, okay, and it should come in contact here, and ultimately, the port through this particular point and all, okay, so the torque transfer will happen, and thus, it is going to the uh, other gear is going to get the most right so now what is this vectors how we have defined them so it's the difference between the thickness of the tooth and the width of tooth space of thickness for this particular gear so it's so like see that. now here this particular so person this is the tooth person for this particular one and in this particular gear this is along with the pitch point only this is the width of space so the difference is this vectors Consider it means uh, whenever it is coming when actually it is placed. So in that particular case, if the then okay. So this particular person, this gap person is nothing but the backless. And because of that, what will happen? Whenever this happening, if 
some motion is being lost here okay so you can just go through that also no problem so now in that particular case okay so now as some motion will be lost so that is one uh, like uh, excessive trick that backlash is that means not triggered but a certain portion of backlash is also desired for proper lubrication if there is no total uh, like there is not even any gap okay no backlash then engagement of initial engagement of two meeting gear will be very difficult apart from that a very minor amount of backlash is also required for proper lubrication within that particular gap see the lubricant will be retained and during the course of this that means all of you already know some for moving personnel to decrease the friction and friction wear etc okay to get better tribological properties okay, the lubrication is one of the very vital requirement okay so now this uh, very minute amount of backlash also allows for having proper lubrication retainment in between but excessive backlash okay it will be like uh, because of that the motion will be lost and the precision of the drive where you employ this uh, gear drive okay will be lost because for a certain amount of the time okay gear is supposed to meeting gear the driver gear will rotate by that particular backlash amount but during that time there is even though you expected some motion to be gained on the driven gear you will not gain anything okay that is the motion is lost after that only once the contact uh, happens then only after that you can expect some motion transfer okay so for today we'll stop here and uh, in the next class we'll start with the course okay so if you have any question any query any confusion you can ask otherwise we'll stop here for today experience anyone yes okay then uh, we'll stop here for today respond to your name calls yes sir shankar yes arsisman arsisman absent rehan present sir arthur present sir absent. okay rishikes present sir Permiki. Sir, part of present, sir. Yes, part of present, part of present. Permiki. Absent. No hustle. Present, sir. Teza. Present, sir. Rajik is not. Absent. And Emil. Emil. Absent. Okay. So thank you, everyone. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.